Hello everyone, I am Renowned Zero, and we are back again talking about Harrison Ford claiming that Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character teaches Indiana Jones how to quote love and laugh and live again. Meanwhile, we had the ending of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull where he essentially got married. So I think all of those things he was already able to do prior to this movie, so that's a little weird that that would be a thing for Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. Harrison Ford recently shared that Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character, Helena Shaw, teaches Indiana Jones how to quote love and laugh and live again in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Ford made the comments while speaking with Screen Ranch Joe Deckelmeyer and asked him, quote, Can you talk to me about what you wanted to focus on in the final chapter with Indiana Jones? Ford responded, quote, As much as we've come to know the character and through his experiences and his relationships, this is the last Indiana Jones for me. So I wanted to deal with the end of his career. I wanted to deal with his age. I really don't know why this movie ever had to be made. And his less physical cap capacity is available to him. And he's also ending his academic career, which has not been the high point of his life. So he's a bit damped down in spirit until he's challenged by the character that Phoebe plays. Ford continued, quote, and in the context of that relationship, he learns to laugh and love and live again. Again, they start him off being divorced from his wife that he married in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The actor previously explained why he chose to return to the role of Indiana Jones, telling Variety, quote, I wanted to do the rest of the story to see the end of his career. As for Indiana Jones' character, the idea that the character is spiritually damped down is something that Ford had previously detailed as well. He told Fandango, I think he has been teaching for however many years. He's a bit dispirited with teaching. His students are not keen with archaeology necessary, and they're kind of loafing through his classes, and I suppose he is as well. And he's now forced to retire by, I suppose, the rules at Hunter College, and they are bringing somebody else in to be the head of the archaeology department, and he has no real future in mind for himself. Basically destroying the character of who Indiana Jones was is essentially what they've done to both Deckard and... From what I've heard. And they've done it to Han Solo as well. Just destroying every single leg legacy character that Harrison Ford plays. As far as those three anyway. Later in the interview he he was asked. Quote, Can you talk about revisiting Indiana Jones and any joy that you found in that? He responded. Quote, there's, a great, there's great joy in playing the character. I'm familiar with the character. I've enjoyed playing the character. I've had great writing to support the character's behavior in the sense of who he is. And this is not one of those times. But now we are taking him into the twilight of his life and his career. Ford continued. We're seeing him not so strong, not so brave, not so attentive. So essentially destroying the character of who he is. But about to go on a grand adventure with a very fascinating set of compatriots and adversaries. Ford is not the only one making these comments. The movie's director James Mangold informed Josh Horowitz during an appearance on the Happy Side Confused show explained that the film is about getting old. Which... Nobody wants to see an old Indiana Jones. They really don't. This movie is on its way to flopping hard. Projections saying somewhere somewhere around $300 million loss. He said, So what occurred to me very strongly was a kind of dose of a bracing dose of honesty that I just tried to see if I unloaded this on everybody, if they'd all just run for the hills or stay with me. Mango continued, and what that was, was just that the strong feeling that this needed to be a movie about getting old and that my star is pushing 80, at that point pushing now firmly in the grasp of it, and there's no way around it. You can't make one of those pictures with a guy pretending he's 45 but in his late 60s. There's no fudgy room. He's an old guy. He continued, quote, and that doesn't mean you make the movie about, oh, my back aches. You mean, it means you make the movie about someone in the final chapter of their lives who is reckoning with all that's happened and what is left in to happen. And to me, the second I could envision that, the second it could become a on, more honest film, which I feel these films have always been about, have really been about their core entertainment. But they were always about something, and so what I presented them was the idea that the movie would be about time. Something that hasn't been done in plenty of movies nowadays. This idea of time travel, which... Whatever. He elaborated, and that, and that therefore, because I'm a kind of a brainiac academic about movies... Yeah... In every Indiana Jones movie, the relic isn't just a relic. The relic embodies a kind of question or mythicism or magic that relates to the theme of the whole picture. And that a movie about fatherhood ends up getting the blessing of one of the knights of the round table. A movie about a kind of aspergy, aspergery professor who hides in books ends up being about him having to confront the power of God inside a golden box. 
each movie the relic is not just val valuable or important or magical but that the magic itself and the kind of magic it possesses ends up relating to the actual theme of that picture so i confronted all of them with this kind of slew idea of ideas and to my great surprise none of them ran away and they all seemed, seemed to smile and get excited and this comes shortly after of course indiana jones saying punching the titular hero was glorious because it was so funny yeah because punching an 80 year old man is definitely funny to to ugly women that look like horses in a sentiment that can only be born out of an unhealthy obsession with identity politics and the story subversion indiana jones and the doubt of destiny star phoebe waller bridge has declared that the scene in which her character punches out the franchise's namesake was glorious because it was so funny it's probably not very funny to people who like this character and like Harrison Ford as this character. By now, whether through leaks or having seen the film themselves, audiences are more well aware of Phoebe Waller-Bridge's textbook, Girl Boss Moment, and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. If you're unfamiliar with it and wish to experience it for yourself, consider this your official spoiler warning for the following two paragraphs. As at the climax of the film, finding himself wounded and at his wit's end in 212 BC, thanks to the time travel hijinks provided by the film's titular MacGuffin, Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones surrenders to his despair and begs his goddaughter Waller Bridges' Helena Shaw to leave him to die in the past. Unwilling to let his actions cause a potentially universe-ending time paradox, Shaw ignores the pleas of the elder hero and instead decks him in the face, knocking him out cold. With Jones unable to fight back, Shaw forcefully drags him back to the present. Awakening in his own apartment, Jones is met by a number of his allies, including Shaw, John Reese, Davy Sally, and most surprisingly, all of his ex-wife Karen Allen's Marion Ravenwood. As I said, that uh, you know they get divorced pretty close to the beginning of the film. With a new lease on life, the hero closes out his story by rekindling his romance with Ravenwood, an opportunity ultimately granted to him by the quick thinking of his goddaughter. Speaking to EW on this moment of blatant character assassination, it's insulting to imply that Jones would ever even consider making such a selfish decision must less ever succumb to the sense of defeat while bridge praise it's such a brilliant cut and it's such an excellent scripted moment it's really not and it really isn't and particularly because there's no there's so much fighting and left hooks and all that stuff all the way through the film which is really not all that indiana jones really is ever when she's just fighting the bad guys she continued but to have to level a punch to the hero of the film was glorious because it was so funny Again, not funny to people who like this character and know about this character a lot more than anyone in Hollywood, it would seem. Informed by the entertainment news outlet that audiences at two separate screenings supposedly loudly cheered at that moment, the Fleabag star laughed before clarifying that underneath it really had heart and emotion, and in my opinion, no it did not. Because Indiana Jones was never that type of character to just give up and, and waste away. He's never been that type of character. But it seems like that's what all of Harrison Ford's characters have been lately, including Han Solo and Deckard. And that's really a testament to Jim, Mangold director, and the Butterworths. For writing a moment like that, she explained, I hope the audience understands why she does it. The audience won't ever understand why you're in anything meaningful like James Bond or even Indiana Jones. No one will ever truly understand, like the audience will never truly understand why you're in anything that's successful like Indiana Jones or James Bond because you disrespected James Bond by spoilers killing him off in the last James Bond film which I've never seen a James Bond film where he dies or gets anywhere near emotional he does in, in the last one than that last one and you decide to punch the title character of Indiana Jones in the face because you thought it was funny it's really not funny to watch your favorite hero or possible male role model character look like a total punk to a hundred pound woman no one cares about that so you essentially added this in just to kind of make him the butt of the joke essentially is what you did and no one likes that and that's why your movie is on the verge of flopping and yet another lucasfilm flop and you don't really care. I can tell you really don't care about this character like the audience does. So you go ahead, show your terrible film, and prepare to lose loads of money on it. 
Thank you all for checking out this video. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers, returning subscribers, new viewers, returning viewers. If you do like this video, hit that like button. Comment below what you feel about all this. Subscribe for more content. Hit the bell for notifications. Set the bell to all that we get notifications anytime I post a new video. And I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.